Let's take a look at the oxidation numbers for transition metals. So how can we find the oxidation number for a transition metal in a compound? First off, the transition metals. Those are right here. And then we also consider these here. These are post-transition metals, these guys right here. We consider those as transition metals when we're finding oxidation numbers. It means they have variable charges. All these have variable charges. Because of that, we have to look at what they're bonded to to figure out their oxidation numbers. So we have these general rules here for finding oxidation numbers. And it says if we have a neutral compound, in this case it doesn't have a negative or a positive, so it's neutral. Neutral compound, everything adds up to zero. And then for Cl, chlorine here, way down here, it's in group 17, it's usually going to be negative one. That'll be its oxidation number. And remember, everything has to add up to zero. So three times negative one, that's negative three. The iron, that has to be positive three. So these add up to zero. So the oxidation number on the iron in iron three chloride, positive three. Now you try one. Find the oxidation number for the iron in this compound. So we know oxygen will be negative two. Everything has to add up to zero because it's a neutral compound. Iron has to be plus two. So this is called iron two oxide. Let's try one with a polyatomic ion. So when we're looking at transition metals, trying to find oxidation numbers, say for the iron here in FeSO4, we need to know that an ion, all the oxidation numbers, they add up to the charge on the ion. So if you know this is the sulfate ion here, and the whole thing has a charge of two minus, you'll know that these oxidation numbers, they add up to two minus. Since everything has to add up to zero, the iron, that has to be two plus. So you do need to know your polyatomic ions. Very valuable skill in chemistry. Now you try one. Find the oxidation number for the transition metal copper in this CuOH2. So if you knew the hydroxide ion, the OH bonded to a metal with an ionic charge of one minus, then you could figure this out pretty quick. Two times the one minus, so we have negative two here. For this all to be zero, this has to be a positive two. So the oxidation number here is plus two. There is another way you could do this though. Since we know oxygen is gonna be negative two and hydrogen, is going to be a positive one when it's bonded to a nonmetal like oxygen, you could figure out, you could call this X and you set up an equation like this, where we have X for copper, negative two plus one. And since we have two of them, we multiply it by two, all that equals zero. If you solve for X, X equals a positive two. You could do it that way, quite a bit of work. Probably better to memorize that the hydroxide ion has an ionic charge of one minus. Give this one a try. Here you need to know that potassium, that's in group one. Here you might know that the entire permanganate ion is one minus, but it probably won't help you a whole lot here because we want to figure out what the manganese is. So to do this, we could set up an equation again. We don't know what this is, but we do know that each oxygen is negative two. So we can set up an equation for this and say one plus the X here, because we don't know what the manganese is, minus the two times four, that'll all equal zero since this is neutral. So we have X minus seven equals zero. X is going to equal a positive seven. So that oxidation number on the manganese is plus seven. Let's do one more where we'll have a compound, actually an ion that has a transition metal in it, and then we'll find the oxidation numbers for that metal. So the rule we're gonna use here is if we have an ion, all the oxidation numbers add up to the charge on the ion. So all of these oxidation numbers are gonna add up to this two minus. So we'll just set it up like we have in, let's call this X here, negative two. So two times X, that's two X, and then we're gonna have a negative two times seven. That's gonna equal the charge on the ion. We're gonna call that negative two. Let me get rid of these rules here. So we have two X minus 14 equals negative two. 
add 14 to both sides, 2x equals 12, x equals a positive 6. So the oxidation number on each one of these chromiums here is plus 6. So that's it. That's how you find oxidation numbers for transition metals. If you need help, there are links in the description at the end of this video to help you do that. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.